Well, welcome, welcome, welcome to everyone. We're just so honored to have you here. And wow, we get to be together for 12 days, just <laughs> diving deep and feeling the joy and expressing the joy and the love and yeah, feeling feeling connected to our source and and we thought in a little while we'd maybe start with some music, but maybe you just want to share an initial mm, an initial well, burst. First up, welcome. <laughs> yes, welcome, welcome, welcome. So beautiful to have you here. And you coming has inspired a lot of joy and a lot of healing and a lot of collaboration for everyone. So it's like Jesus is bringing everyone together and we're all being guided by the Spirit, and it's it's all part of this big collaboration you know, of awakening. And so there's no accident of who's here and who's brought together, and it's just going to be so beautiful to behold the miracles and the connections and witness yeah, all that's going to unfold for us during these coming 12 days. So thank you for making it here. I know it's a big, <laughs> it's a big journey. It can be like a pilgrimage um, to, to come all the way here for many of you. So again, welcome. Just want you to feel so at home. Like really, this place belongs to Jesus. You know, it, it is the Spirit's place and we're stewards and we're all here just inviting the presence of spirit and and the Christ to come and partake. So we just want you to feel very at home. <laughs> it's very spacious here. That we the monastery sits on like around forty eight acres. So this will be our main gathering room and session room, but we we have a, a cozy chapel, which I've, Kirsten said, I think we could spontaneously all squeeze in into the chapel. Uh, if we have a little notice, we can rearrange some couches and, and chairs. Uh, we have another thing that's called uh, the Love's Nest. Uh, I think it had a different name when it was being built because uh, it was dredging out a pond, mm -hmm. something with it. It was the hell pit. The hell pit. Uh, <laughs> but the hell pit eventually became Love's Nest. <laughs> but when it was rocks being mud and dredging, you know, you hear a lot of growling and grumbling going on. But now it's the Love's Nest. It's been the Love's Nest for a while. We have a little, uh, it's like a little stage there and it's kind of cozy. And then there's nice grass around it. So that could be a possibility. And then farther. Uh, to the east, there's a, a beautiful uh, little deck that we have that kind of extends out right to the edge of the canyon. So you're kind of like in a in a bird's nest, uh, right on the edge of the the beautiful canyon. We have that, and so we can mix it up a little bit. Uh, see what the weather is every day. You know that that's a factor in where we gather. We want to keep the focus on all just relaxing and being together in comfort and. And uh, yeah, we probably will have morning sessions and maybe some mixed sessions, experiential sessions in the afternoon and, and some evening sessions. I've heard a little bird said there may even be a silent day. So that that's kind of a, a lot of fun out here in the canyon because it's very quiet and it's beautiful just to give yourself that spacious quiet with no structure. Just kind of let let yourself pray and meditate and soar and connect, and that's very beautiful too. So, so yeah, th there's a lot of uh, options that we'll use during the the whole twelve days, and got a lot of space to to do it with too. Yeah, we're not going to be squeezed at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is it. It's like you're coming in to just have a little taste of our life which is very given every day. You know, it's, it's letting the plans be given to us. And so every for, for, for tomorrow or the following day, it's like the curriculum gets revealed to us. It's a prayer to see really what is the call? Is it time for, is it rest? Is it quiet? Is it 
inspiration? Is it a deep movie gathering? So it just feels like we've got so much, <laughs> so much to draw on. Yeah. Yeah, and our mind is so powerful. If you think that that this is a dream, and like in lesson one hundred and fifty-two, you know the power—it's the power of the mind, and and that there's nothing random. There's no such thing as fortunate or unfortunate or luck. Chance plays no part, and basically we're told that the world that we perceive is exactly as we want it to be. Uh, nothing, not a molecule, not even an electron is out of place. Everything is the result of our, our mind and our wish. And so we've all kind of decided to wish for forgiveness. If you, if you had a genie bottle, okay, I've, I've done my nine wishes, I've got one left. Forgiveness! <laughs> Absolutely. Peace of mind. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. I enjoyed the genie, but I want peace of mind, you know. And so that's very, very powerful when you think about it. I, I was telling a parable last night with the, the residents and support crew of a, of a friend of mine who so much wanted to be with me, and the, it seems like the whole global uh, configuration changed just in order that he could spend 20, 21 days with me driving me around Australia. And people go, no, it can't be that the whole world situation would shift because of someone's desire. But, but our mind is that powerful, and that's why we're not ever victims. We're never victims of external circumstances. We're just learning that they're not external, <laughs> and we're, that it's one with us, and that our mind is very powerful. And, and we have to take it seemingly in steps, because it's it's a lot of power to come back into contact with. You know, a lot of times people say, well, I'd like to think that I can manifest specific things, but to have the entire power of the mind returned and see that there's no accidents and there's nothing chance or anything like that, that's, that can be daunting. Uh, if you're used to playing tiny and small, <laughs> that's bigger than big. That's that's the Holy Christ, that's the vastness. And, and it does seem to require mind training, which is a way of us coming into it in an experiential way, uh, where we are not frightened by it. And sometimes there's a word in the Course called miscreation, and that's just, you might say, the, the attempt to misuse the creative ability that was given in creation by God. So miscreation can be kind of scary. You know, when people think of nightmares or night terrors, you know, that's kind of a frightening thing too, to wake up in the middle of the night and you're sweating and it's like, what is this and where did this come from? Oh, the unconscious mind, the unwatched mind popping up again. But our purpose is to let everything up and let everything out and let everything go. So it's a big letting go process, really, and it takes a lot of faith and a lot of trust to let go to that extent, but that's, that's what we're here for. We're all like raising our hands saying, yes, we say yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, oftentimes the, on the first session, it's it's kind of like a, a prayer session where we're all just getting in touch with the prayer of our heart. And since everything we experience kind of s starts with and comes from our prayers, even if we're not aware all the time what we're praying for, it's it's helpful to become more aware <laughs> of what we're praying for. What do I really want? What do I really want to come of this? You know, every moment of every day. I think there was a few years ago, I went to the Mormon temple with a group of, of our community, and it's, I don't know, maybe seven or eight of us, and we were walking around, there's all these missionaries dressed up and walking around us, and finally a, there was a woman, a missionary came up to us, and she, she 
She stared into the eyes of all of us. She looked at all of us and she started pointing into people's eyes and she started going around the group and she looked into Lisa's eyes and said, Will you pray with me? And then she went to the next person, Will you pray with me? She looked him right in the eye, you know. She got around and she came around to me and she said, she looked me in the eye and she said, Will you pray with me? I said, I pray unceasingly. She went, Oh, that's so good. <laughs> <laughs> it was like she was totally got the answer she was looking for. <laughs> but but we do. We pray unceasingly. We're just not aware of what we're praying for. And therefore our prayer, our desire is split. And Jesus said, Let thine eye be single. He just said, Want God. Desire God above all else and and you will know uh, what the Father's will is if you desire God above all else. So that's what our journey. But these opening sessions are very important for us because we always want the whole retreat to be very, very practical for you and very, very relevant so that you come through it and say, wow, that was impactful or wow, that cleared some things away for me or that brought a peace to my mind or a, a relief, even maybe an unexpected relief, because it was so relevant and so practical that, that the retreat became nothing more than the answer to your prayer. You prayed for it and you got it. You, you were answered. And there's a satisfaction, there's a deep sense of fulfillment and completion and acceptance that comes when we're aware that our prayers are answered. Nobody likes the feeling that your prayers are unanswered, that you're dialing up and, okay, is anybody <laughs> paying attention here, you know? Is anybody listening? We want to be heard, we want to feel and experience what we're praying for. We want it directly. So, I think these kind of opening sessions are important because what you pray for and what you speak up and what you speak out, what's important to you, is really we, what we want to hear. What is important for you? Because that will be important with every... If we watch movies, the movies would be an answer to the prayer. The, the interactions, the holy encounters will be an answer to the prayer of the heart. The music we listen to, the the experiential exercises, everything will then be seen as, oh, that's, that's my answer. That's what I was looking for. That's what I was asking for. Even if I wasn't aware of it, sometimes you, you don't know the question until the solution appears and then the question dissolves and you go, oh, I didn't even realize that was my question. <laughs> It's nice to see it when it's dissolving away. Okay, ah, and goodbye to you. <laughs> I don't need that. One time I was in Florida many years ago, and there was a gentleman who was in the audience when I kind of opened it up for questions, and he was he seemed very mentally kind of disturbed, and and he his train of thoughts would just seemed very. For the people in the audience, they were very scattered. He would kind of like, like shoot off a thing, and then something unrelated, and then something unrelated, and and the people were just watching. And then they listened to him for like five minutes, and then as I began to answer him, uh, then during the break, I had a f several people came up to me and said, "I didn't understand anything that he was talking about." or I didn't know where he was going with anything, until you answered him and suddenly I could see what the question was through the answer. But without the answer, that was like, seems very scattered. Like, what is going on? What is, what is happening? It was kind of disorienting. But they said, when you gave the answer, I knew what his question was. And that's how Jesus is with us. He, he knows the prayer of our heart before we verbalize the question. He's just wanting us to experience the truth of the answer, which we have. We are. We are the, 
the truth of that answer. But that's why sometimes it, it's helpful to just be open and transparent. And even if you don't know where it's going, even if you feel like, I'm supposed to speak, but I don't know exactly what I'm going to say. Uh, we, Yvonne did that last night. We were here and she said, I feel I'm supposed to speak, but I haven't a clue what's going to come out. <laughs> so we're all like, oh, good. <laughs> that's good. And it was very profound and very deep. So that just shows the willingness, if you're willing to verbalize your prayer and just say what's on your heart as a prayer, then that helps all of us and helps, helps us tune into the spirit of how to be truly helpful. Because we don't want to play any kind of mind games with ourselves. We, we're tired of playing hide and seek, of, of identifying with this personality self and feeling unfulfilled and disillusioned and less than and not enough. We want to feel full, completely fulfilled, completely immersed, completely connected, completely aligned. We want that. And we have to learn to expose whatever was hidden uh, so we can release it. We can't really release it if we're not even aware of it. But when we do get aware of it, in a, in a atmosphere of safety, of comfort, of relaxation, then it seems like, oh wow, that's, that's easier than I thought. <laughs> Healing isn't really like a process, it's, it's really just, the prayer of our heart is, let healing be. We're just trying to tap into a state of mind that is fully healed and whole. So it's more the tapping into it than the, the way we've taught We've been taught and learned that it's a process. It's all, always a process. It's a process. It's a process. That's the timeline. How can the healing be a timeline if it's if it's already given? If it's if it's already there for us, it must be a state that we just want to be aware of, not something where we ha constantly have to say, oh, "I'm processing. I'm still processing that." How are you feeling? Give me a while. I'm, I'm processing. Meanwhile, 25 years later, I'm processing, I'm processing <laughs> at the funeral, I'm processing, you know, the, you know, it's like we we're addicted <laughs> to processing because we're addicted to time. And ego invented time to keep us from knowing who we are right now, which is where the healing is. The healing is always in the present moment. So yeah, that's, that's kind of exciting. So yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. So we have a mic, and so we'll just pass the mic along. And if you'd just like to share your name um, to start with, this is also just a beautiful way for everyone to meet, you know. And I know in some of the prayers and some of the applications, um, many of you said, I've, I've been doing this on my own for quite a long time, and I want to join. I want to. I want the experience and I want to join. So this is the opening night to just really share from the heart and have the experience to really take it in. Yeah, take in the prayers. So yeah, just share your name and if you need to, yeah, share how you feel in the moment. <laughs> if you need to clear anything, fear of holding a microphone. Uh, <laughs> if you're afraid, you, you, yeah, you could maybe pass, and then it can come back to you back when here. you feel more relaxed. Whatever you feel. <laughs> How long are we thinking here? What? <laughs> Just um, a brief. I'm Kimberly. What was the question? <laughs> yes, I'm Kimberly. <laughs> I'm really happy to be here. Mm -hmm. And shall I give you goals or I was listening, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. any prayers on your heart or anything prayers. that's kind of been on your mind that okay. feels like it would be a a reason why you came like oh. Yeah. I've listened to you talk about rinsing the mind 
and how you can be very intentional about how much you're willing to do that. And that's one of my main reasons for being here, to be able to clear as much ego as possible, to be able to see what it looks like to live together in community in this way, in love. I'm here to receive a lot of love, hopefully, <laughs> um, because love has been something that um, my earliest memories are me pushing away my mother's love. Isn't that interesting? So I've been exploring that um, a lot lately and trying to find ways to be able to receive love. And it feels safe here, and it feels held here, and whatever comes up, comes up. So I'm excited to be here. <laughs> it's very scary right now. <laughs> so sorry. Uh, my name is Tomoko. Uh, I'm Japanese, uh, living in Canada. And um, my dear friend Yuko brought me here. Um, and um, it's just uh, so. This is a one of the things. Like I'm just too hard on myself, um, have to be good, you know, all the shit would and um, um, I think it's part of part of me how I grew up, uh, all the culture thing that Karsten talking about that too, like as a Japanese. Um, and then the other side is just, um, if I speak up, like it have to be brand the camp really stick out it can be different so this is very frightening but um i wanted to feel um all us like old like one mind i just wanted to feel more and more and then just to be so calm in this moment not to think about me as an ego mind, <laughs> if that makes sense to you guys. I don't know. Um, yeah, just just wanted to have a shower of oneness. And yeah, just wanted to feel that. Thank you. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh. <laughs> uh, um, my name is Yuko. Um, I'm living in Canada and very near her house in 10 minutes. Um, I study a course in Miracle for maybe 10 years. But, and then my life is getting so like a, like a foreign, like a, so many, like a, after study a course in Miracle, I felt like a, everything will be okay. Like a, the families gonna be okay and but it wasn't it's so difficult for my life now and then every day I have to do forgiveness and then getting more know about like a oneness feel like I let I have to let go my son and then after forgiveness for him about him I feel more like a Wow, everybody's same or like a very understand about you talk every day I watch YouTube <laughs> getting more and more understand after I left him and I feel like a, yeah maybe I it's ready to come here. I wanted to come long time but feel not ready. And this time I don't know I said okay I'm gonna wait some some kind of sign come. And I wait, 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 and then it's every, like, uh, my circumstance, feel, everybody said, you should go, you should go. And I'm oh, really? Mm -hmm. And then I thought, okay, but, but, but everybody said, yeah, yeah, you should go. It's okay. Don't worry. And, okay, maybe I should do, I should write the application. And I start applicating, oh, should I go? Should I go? <laughs> and then finally I finished it and then 
the application said, Holy Spirit decided, oh, okay, wow, I have to think about it. <laughs> yes, and then I'm here and so happy. Yes, <laughs> yes, so sorry, I'm so nervous. And yeah, but I'm just so happy. Yes, thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe you could, you could tell everyone now to hold yeah. the mic. So, yeah, try to hold it like an ice cream cone. It's a directional mic. I know sometimes you get it and then you start talking and it's like... But this will help each other to remember. My name is Andrea. Oh, my God. <laughs> um... Okay. What do I want to say? Hmm. Uh, trying to remember how words words are <laughs> um, I I really I feel like I'm so dedicated but I, I want more joy I'm like working so hard it doesn't quite match up And you know, I say to like <clears throat> people in my life, like, like I, I need to have like an experience. Like, there's just like my mind, like, is strong in like conceptual understanding, but like, I need an experience that really like strengthens my faith and so I'm like I'm going through all the motions with a lot of determination but I don't always like have a shift and I stay in like sort of just not feeling that great you know And I think also I, I want to be able to actually like receive the miracles because I'm sure there are so many and I'm just like, I'm like, just like turning my head at the wrong moment, you know, it's like, I mean, I'm here and this is amazing. I feel very lucky. So I could say more. I have like life things that I would love to have. I'm just, I just... I want to like miracles are involuntary. Like if so, if they're not happening, some I'm like, yes, I'm into that. Let's do that. <laughs> so um, that's kind of what I'm. You know, I want to taste that. I want a taste of that. You guys are always looking so in the flow, you know. And I'm just like, yeah, I I, I feel inspired, and I wanna I wanna really like, I wanna be living in that. Yeah. And then extending to whoever's in my, like, you know, fractal of life, just what I'm supposed to give. So, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>
Great. Hi, my name is Muna. Um, it's really hard. It's been hard for me to know what is it, what brought me here, uh, what is it that I want. But what I'm present to right now is I want to stop. I want to stop being stopped. I want to stop being afraid. And I want to stop letting fear stop me. Um, and it's a big stop. Uh, it's, it's getting less and less and diluted, but I'm afraid. I'm af right now, I'm afraid, and I don't want that anymore. And the biggest thing I'm afraid of is, is loving. It's like I'm terrified of loving. Yeah, I want to bring the lovingness. Yeah, I want to bring that back into my my mind, my system. I don't know why I stopped loving. <sighs> I don't know why I stopped loving so completely. <sighs> I don't know why I stopped believing in love. I mean, I know intellectually and I know from, and that's analyzing the past, but I stopped believing in love and stopped loving, stopped being able, as if I'm unable to love. My life has been hard because of that. And things aren't moving as much as I would like them to move. So whatever obstacle there is in my mind, in my heart, yeah, this woundedness in my heart just doesn't go away. And I don't know why. And I keep finding myself alone, you know. Um, and it's hard to love when you're alone so much of the time. And it's hard to be in flow as well. Um, so, yeah, I think that's the fundamental thing I want to move through. It's a big obstacle. It's been the main big obstacle throughout my whole entire life. And I'm done healing trauma and I'm done processing. I'm really done. I just, I thought, I said to Holy Spirit, this is it, this retreat or nothing. I'm not, I can't process anymore. There's just no energy in me. Just so exhausted, running and empty. But yeah, that is the prayer of my heart to, to bring the lovingness back and to have a loving, loving life, loving dream and to let the love flow again. Yeah, I think that's me. <laughs> Hi, my name is Beth. And in sitting in my hotel room last night, the phrase that popped to mind when I asked about an intention for the retreat um, was a phrase that you shared, David, many years ago, and I've heard you say since, is to live an experience of being clueless, carefree, and cared for. And I'm blessed to have an opportunity to live that way in life. Um, but the word that came to mind while I was hearing you speak this evening was to have that be consistent and to not move in and out of it. Consistency in that experience, consistency in joining, you know, as I reflected coming, I move in and out of 
allowing myself to be lived through and done through and then saying, okay, now I get to go have some private time and take my body in a separate space. So what's coming to mind in this moment is to allow myself to have a consistency of like that, that just to use a word you used earlier is unceasing that that just doesn't stop. Um, so that's what's coming to mind in this moment that I get to take the consistency deeper um, and to like, I'm really looking forward to someone else mentioned it about being in community. I have an opportunity to be out in the world and, and living, but the, the community part of it, like I have friends and I have other people who are having this conversation and I'm really looking forward to joining in mind and heart. Um, so consistency and the other one that came to mind on the ride here was contribution. So spirit tends to speak to me in alliteration. So those are a lot of C words. <laughs> so that's about par for the course for me. Um, <laughs> I don't know where that comes from. It's always been that way. So um, those are a lot. And that feels complete for me. Thank you. <laughs> I love how part of my parable is that I was born an English teacher's daughter. So I think like the alliteration and the languaging, like it's a fun, fun joke. You'll see how many other C words come from my mouth during the course of the retreat. <laughs> Yeah. It's the spirit's humor. Yeah, <laughs> it's involuntary. You don't even try to do it. Hello. My name is Daumans. I am from Latvia. I'm very glad and pleased and thankful to be here. And um, so I'm, uh, I am with Course of Miracles uh, seven years, practicing as good as I can, full force like men do. <laughs> and, uh, and and uh, and so and uh, this is a moment in my life when I feel that uh, okay I have achieved what I can achieve alone with some uh, with some comrades in my country two three only in course in miracles and so I need some more uh, people uh, thinking alike and here you are <laughs> and so th thank you for that and uh, my uh, my my. Uh, my Camino home, since I met, uh, of course, Miracles and Jesus, or, or, or opposite, they met me, maybe. <laughs> uh, I, I, this morning it came to me. First step was, I will fight no more ever. It kind of came to me. Then next step was, uh, I will lie no more ever. Uh, and now I am in a step, I will hide no more ever. And, uh, you know, those uh, three uh, sayings came as a decision. They start with a decision in mind level. I believe it was in mind level, not, not here. And now I see how it uh, opens, how it uh, works for me. And, uh, okay, not to make this uh, story too long, but uh, I am uh, feeling that uh, I don't know what surrender is. I really have been kind of... A, saying and praying surrender and uh, uh, but uh, so someone in me are uh, uh, is still hiding you know i will hide no more it's for both parts of me is okay even for ego part it's okay why not okay let's play this game but surrender is something which is not for ego i believe and here is some mismatch so i'm here maybe to with your uh, assistance, we can uh, I can uh, learn some surrender more. <laughs> I, I'm ready. I am ready. <laughs> okay. They're all so going much. nodding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're with Thank you. Thank you so much. That's it for today. So. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you all for being here with me and you. And I'm at the border Wednesday, and the um, officer looks at my passport and asks me what my purpose is and what I'm doing. 
So I tell him I'm going to the Living Miracle Monastery. What's your purpose there? And I says, well, it's a retreat. And he says, well, who are you running from? <laughs> uh, I said, my mind. <laughs> Free pass. That was the right answer. Yeah. Move ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Move on. So uh, that's actually the second time that's happened. Just about the same thing. I didn't realize the significance of uh, what I spoke, or have spoken for at least 10 years now. <clears throat> Until recently, I was listening to some, up to some of the videos, revisiting new ones. And uh, I've contemplated oneness for 20, well, I, I thought 35 years. Really didn't grasp the whole concept of it. <clears throat> A lot of lip service and didn't apply to anybody's life that I could make sense of. <clears throat> so I realized in a video that I heard you speak of somebody that was, it was a monker at a monastery and all he did is contemplated what was God. So it hit me what I've been seeking. That's why I'm here. Thank you. You were, you, were, you were eating an ice cream really weirdly then. So I'm trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go like that. Um, okay. I'm, <clears throat> hi, I'm Joanna. Got a bit of a cough. Um, I'm really new to Course in Miracles. <laughs> like, really new. Um, and I got really obsessed with it. And I've been reading it solidly for <clears throat> about five months. And um, I kind of, after a long period of spiritual searching, I sort of suddenly re yeah, picked it up and realized that this is what I, I, want. I want. I want to choose the Holy Spirit's thought system. So I've come here to find out how. <laughs> um, and I really want to stop judging people. I, I really hate. I just really hate judgment and I realize it's the way to peace and it's really, really exciting and thrilling that that could be the future. So, and I was doing it completely on my own. So it's, I just wanted to come and meet people who are the same wavelength as well. But it was a long trip. <laughs> Hi, I'm Gabby. And talking in public is not my strength, <laughs> but here we are. <laughs> um, I feel really overwhelmed right now. There's a lot of energy in this room, and it feels overwhelming, but mostly exciting and happy. And yeah, I've been, um, the last like three years have been really, really hard for me. But I've been healing a lot in the process <laughs> of healing. <laughs> so I guess it's time to say, okay, healing is here and now, and I need to stop processing and tap into it. Um, yeah, just open up. I came without expectations. Uh, my prayer was just like, I'm going with an open heart. Show me. Show me the way. Uh, I want to really be able to listen clearly and to follow and to leave behind what I think I want um, to connect with a higher purpose. Um, it's really my prayer. And... Um, yeah, I think basically that's it. Have the experience, not just the intellectual knowledge, but to have the experience of this immense, profound love that I know that is there. I can feel it, but um, I want to experience deeply. Um, 
So I think this is the place. And I will be forever and ever grateful for you, Kirsten. <laughs> and it comes full circle, I guess. Yeah. My name is Sophia, and I really resonate with like everything that everyone's saying. Oh my gosh. But my my deepest prayer is to when David said was talking about praying and like what are we praying and we're receiving that reality, you know, as our prayer, whatever we're we're praying. I guess I'm unconsciously still my deepest prayer is to create an illusion of suffering for myself through bodily sensations. And even though my prayer consciously is to not label and identify and create that reality for myself, it's still happening. And to at a degree that it's um, lately, like since I found David, it feels like um, in the past few weeks, especially like the talons are in deep of pay attention to the sensation. And if I allow myself to start going down that path, it pulls me out of love and presence and joy. And I could feel guided to go talk to someone in the store, but I'm like, no way, I'm exhausted. Like this pain is so deep in my body. I have to go home and lay down or something like that. And um, like right now, I'm just gonna say it. But it's, we've been traveling a little before we got here and there's always evidence to grab onto. And it's day six that I haven't had a, a bowel movement and I feel it so in my body, I just feel it. And it's like, I'll be connecting with the presence of the moment and joy and I don't even feel it. I'm like, oh my gosh, no sensation. But as soon as I let a little crack in, there I am so deep in it and it doesn't matter what I feel like I do, how deeply I pray, or I'm like, Holy Spirit, please, Jesus, yeah. my deepest prayer, I release it, take it, all the things, it's like here, and it can be there for days or weeks, so it feels like I'm getting a little bit of a freedom outside of labeling or identifying, and it's just pure joy and bliss, like it doesn't matter what life throws at me, like anything that is available in the moment, I can meet with love and openness, but then as soon as I one thought away and then it's like down into the, it feels like the fiery pits of hell, I'm like super dramatic, but I'm like, oh my gosh, when I identify. So I, I guess my deepest prayer is to expose those beliefs that are still deeply held that continue to create that as my main experience and to expose those over and surrender those over because that is my commitment and I know that's how I can fully fulfill my function is to let go of what part of me is so committed to holding on to. So, thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Jeremiah. I found myself here by being introduced to Dave about four months ago. I had uh, been introduced to the course probably about 30 years ago, read it numerous times and thought I knew what I was doing. But then I read, I saw one of your videos and I was like, all right, <laughs> I've been misinterpreting all of this. <laughs> I'm supposed to be happy and joyful, and it's like... So my interpretation was dry, and it was literal, and it was just grueling almost. And then I see your enthusiasm and your joy, and it's like, all right, I want what that guy's got. <laughs> and so then Sophia and I, uh, she's... Four months in, I'm submersed in, in your videos, and she says, there's a retreat. And she says, and I think she contacted you, and she says, where should we go, Mexico or Utah? And you said, well, I'm going to be in Utah, so if you want to see me, that's where you come. And I said, all right, well, let's go. And I said, I want to meet this guy because, heck, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's kind of like this, you know. You, when you can see a person that's, surrendered the ego to your degree to where spirit flows. I mean, that's why I'm here is because I want to aspire to do that myself. So I'm hoping that grievances get exposed. This has been a prayer also we've committed to, which hasn't been real fun because they will be exposed. And 
also to practice with a group of people. I mean, the majority of my practice has been like undercover, you know, in groups of people and I'm just practicing forgiveness. And so it'd be nice to be around a group of people that can speak about their experiences and, and what they're going through. So, yeah. And also Sophia and I are, uh, we call ourselves what partners in awakening because obviously we were immersed in a special relationship which the ego does and now we've become very conscious that we're just like clear mirrors for one another and we read uh, your book we married a mystic this last week and it's it's act, it's been almost like a comedy skit for us because Sophia's like I hate this book. projecting twenty four seven on you know. So these parables are have what have helped me to take the course and put it into application and thank you guys. Uh. My name is Menon. Yeah, it feels like it's the early stages of just trusting to open my mouth, not knowing what's going to come out. <laughs> and just giving myself to that experience, like I have no idea, like there's so much. Um, I'm very grateful to be here. I'm very grateful to all of you for being here, for having said yes. I'm amazed, like how quickly one can fall in love with all these people because, well, I don't know you, but <laughs> so, like, I can all feel you. And um, I think I'm, I'm hoping for an experience. It feels like I believe myself to be very dedicated. And sometimes it feels like it's a side activity. So there's life and then and I would really like to experience what it is, because sometimes in, in retreats, like it appears like you move into the space and then you move out to be in the space, like for a longer amount of time to have that purpose out front. Um, yeah, in an, in an environment like that feels safe, where, where I feel held. I think ultimately, like my desire is to give myself wholeheartedly I've got the belief that if I am true to who I am and if I really follow my heart, that people are going to get hurt and I'm really battling with the guilt that I project out. Um, yeah, and I guess like it's also like it, it feels like I've sort of come out of the closet at the beginning of this year where I first publicly said yes. And then it is like opportunities to say yes, they just keep presenting themselves. And I hope to just, yeah, feel like to really receive the guidance, to not be fearful of it, to deepen in trust. And I have this thought, and I, I don't know whether it's true, that I'm comfortable looking at the mind, but I'm not sure whether I'm so comfortable in allowing emotions to move through. So I just want to put out there that if any emotions are to move through, that I pray that I am yeah, giving myself the space yeah, for that to happen. Yeah. I'm Rose and um yeah, I think for me too, it's also wanting more consistency, um, releasing the attraction to guilt <laughs> when I fall out of <laughs> the awareness, um, not beating myself up because then it holds me in that. Um, so yeah, I think consistency, like integrating it, I guess, all throughout. Um, I tend to shy away from anything that I think is conflict, which is just not going along with whatever anybody else says. So um, staying in that truth, um, despite what somebody else at the grocery store, or whatever is, is saying, um, kind of not, yeah, I, I like shrink myself 
back down, I think. Um, so yeah, just being more comfortable. So I, I guess it goes along with people pleasing, maybe the fear of offending somebody or someone not liking me or thinking I'm weird or <laughs> whatever. So yeah, that's it. I'm Candace, and um, a couple of years ago, I saw it come through Facebook, come stay at Camus, and I did, <laughs> and I jumped on it, and I went for three months, and I ended up staying for six months, and I had a lot of buttons pushed. It was co-living. It wasn't like what we're experiencing here, so it was it was a lot different, and um, I... Uh, I since I left there, within a little over a month, I broke a hip and knees went south. And I have had so freaking many physical elements or physical things going on that it's just, what the hell's going on? I haven't had physical things like this ever. And um, so it's just, uh, I know that I'm here to deal with some very deep anger and... Um, and a lot of it was really brought up at Camus. And um, I have not had a place where I felt safe. Even there, I did not feel safe bringing these things up. And um, when I would come up here and work during that time, I wanted so much to stay. <laughs> and um, so I'm very grateful to be back here and um, to be able to stay and re release some deep bullshit. So, anyway. <laughs> My name is Phil. Um, why did I come? You know, last 48 hours or maybe longer than that, I was asking myself that. Are you really going to get on the plane? <laughs> Came from Costa Rica yesterday. Um, but I thought about it. Um, I think I may have been the last one to sign up. I didn't know anything about it until a few weeks ago. Um, but now I thought about it when you said this a little while ago, and I thought, I'm here because my daughter died. I had been a lifetime Christian, and I begged God, begged him, please reveal the truth of who you are to me. I led mission trips, Bible studies, you name it. Dad a preacher, granddad a preacher. But I never really felt what I was looking for. And so I was tearing through my journal. Reveal yourself to me. And then my daughter got sick a little over eight years ago. And i tell that story some other time perhaps. But when she died, I was, I knew I could never go down the same path I was on. I had to put everything I ever believed up on the highest shelf you can think of. And, and yet I knew it wasn't just about finding healing, which felt impossible, but finding truth. And about three years after that, I, you know, it's hard to remember exactly, but it seemed like everywhere I looked, a Course in Miracles, A Course in Miracles, A Course in Miracles. Now, my wife had actually bought the book as soon as our daughter was dying because A Course in Miracles. We wanted a miracle, you know? And um, I opened it then, and it was totally impossible to even think about reading. My mind was gone, and it was gibberish. I, I was like, this is Yoda speaking in some kind of crazy parables. I just, you know, I can't, I can't deal with this, you know? But three years later, um, after she died, everywhere I looked, it was calling me. And so I picked it up, and just to use earthly terms, it was like almost immediately my body was vibrating, and I couldn't put it down. And So that's been five years ago. And um, I've experienced this peace that it speaks of at the deepest level in a brief moment, which I will not get into right now, but the the peace that it speaks of I know is true. 
And yet I also continue this journey, which includes my wife of 36 years plus we are practically divorced at this point. Um, and so I've been traveling. I didn't do what you did, David, just take off with nothing. But I came to the States six months ago with some resources, but pretty much stayed in 25 different places, just traveling around, just, God, what the heck is going on? What's next? All the time immersed in the course and continuing my healing journey and forgiveness lessons, and yet extremely confused. Where am I going to, what am I going to do now at this stage of life? All the foundational stuff, the earthly foundational, the wife, the kids, you know, just everything different, the job. So for whatever reason, a few weeks ago, I just felt this urge. I, I emailed the uh, Mexico and they said, no, don't come here. <laughs> There's something in Utah and I had just found out about it. And, and I decided to come because I think I've been a lone wolf, it feels like, you know, doing my own thing. And I just really wanted to be around people that were seeking what I was seeking. Um, plus, I think, uh, you, listen, I just filled out that app almost like a whim. I, I opened it. I'm like, I'm not going to fill this out. Boom, I was through with it. And next thing you know, here I am, you know. So it's it's funny how that works, right? Um, but I do remember my finger hovering above commitment and pay buttons two or three times going, are you going to drop this finger down? You know, <laughs> Even though it's the most important thing in the world to me is the pursuit of, you know, I don't like using some of these words I use, but I do pursuit of truth. And so I'm here to um, just do whatever God does just to be open to whatever God does i mean we all want the peace that passeth understanding we want to live in that peace that passeth understanding that's not of this world and so yeah some of all that is why i'm here <laughs> um well i've been sitting here asking Holy Spirit to take charge of what I'm going to say. Um, it's a lot of intensity. There's a lot of electricity felt, um, and uh, uh, well, if I if I land on what seemed to be the most active on the way here, it was um, just driving here. It was. Um, the ego mind was, I have a really strong active mind and it, it wants to participate in its own unwinding. It wants to study itself. It wants to help. It wants to, you know, and um, uh, for a long time I, I felt pretty overwhelmed by that, pretty su subdued by the enormity of, of how it was doing that unrelentingly. So, um but as I get more convinced that that the past totally, completely didn't happen, the future totally, completely can't be, you know, planned or imagined or anything. So all of that slowly, slowly comes together. And um, uh, it's like the mind... <laughs> the Holy Spirit repurposing and confounding and unwinding in the midst of so much mental effort is just, it's so brilliant and so loving and so powerful and so unimaginable. Um, and then, you know, so I was just working on that, working on that, backtracking, deconstructing, and then I got here and all these people... You know, even people I knew before, I couldn't even recognize them. You know, and and I, I don't. I mean, the usual thing of of you know a bunch of projections coming out every time I meet somebody, that hasn't been happening. 
I mean, you know, the Holy Spirit just keeps doing what he does. And it's just so expansive and amazing. And I'm glad there's so many people and it's way too many for me to, you know, kind of land on and make people out of them. And I mean, this is just so tremendous to be here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Beverly. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name's Paul. I uh, flew in today from Chicago, where I live. And uh, I think I'll find out tomorrow whether I'll be working, because uh, I work for the US federal government, and um, which is fine, either way. I don't, it's okay. Um, I, it's a little surreal to be here. Like, I don't really watch much TV. I watch a lot of videos and like three people I watch a lot of videos of are here, uh, including Jeffrey. I was so happy to meet him today from the bottom up uh, with Frank. That was so great at the time to go through that and uh, see those videos. Um, yeah, when I, I had a hard time stepping on the plane today, uh, I was like, should I do this? I, well, you've only been doing this two years now, and you did this mystical Christ Academy, and I got the comfort of sitting behind a computer screen, and but then to come here and see a mighty companion that I talk to on a weekly basis, people I work with within the community, uh, Betsy and, and Vicky and Mignon, uh, it's just so nice to be here to meet them. And I, I think I want what others have said. I just want that consistency of just being happy and having that peace of mind. And I love you started with you, that you pray unceasingly because this is something I've been trying to do for months now. And so I work a little and then I say a prayer and then I work a little and I say a prayer and, um, I don't know. I don't know what's, I'm open. I'm really interested to see what's going to happen this week. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen, which is good. And I'm interested to see how this takes off from here. Am I still going to be doing what I'm doing, uh, as far as work? And it, and it's something I love to do. I mean, I, I mentioned it during the, uh, during the mystical Christ Academy that I get to work with native Americans and, nonprofits that support refugees that are coming into the country and i get to have these beautiful communion with these people on a daily basis like just these beautiful discussions and i can say course material to them and and if i don't say the course nobody knows but it's like me applying it uh on a day-to-day -day basis and I, I, i'm here for the consistency that's uh, I, I i really uh i'm just so happy to be here and see what's going to happen this week um i i, I want to take stuff back like uh this whole idea of praying and then deciding what we're going to do like oh my gosh i could hardly wait to dive into this <laughs> because that is not what i do <laughs> or, I plan everything out and I'm starting to get better at it. I don't plan as much anymore, but um, well, it's just great. I just like looking forward to a, an experience, a beautiful experience. And, uh, and thank you for that. So. Hi everyone. My name is Balange, but I go for, I go by Bali for friends and family. Uh, I'm from Hungary. Prayer has been playing a very important role in my life for a time. I've, I've been praying to Jesus uh, six uh, since uh, I was six years old, and uh, I, as a kid as well, I always had faith, a strong faith, and I always felt that my prayers were answered but when the course uh, came into my life it was in 2018 so yeah five and a half years ago because it was in february so it was such a shocking experience uh, that uh, when i <clears throat> read the lines of the course i actually i really knew that uh, that jesus was 
that was writing me these uh, the, these books so it was just meant to be uh, my uh, my journey from that moment on and uh, in a year the time it was in 2019 on the 6th of january and i, I just realized it two or three weeks later that the 6th of january is the uh, christian holiday of epiphany um, and i had the beautiful uh, no, I know. Back in those days, I did not know what it was. That it was a revelatory experience. Um, we just uh, heard it from Andy uh, when we traveled over here. That uh, he had something very similar. When you uh, experience the the love of God, that peace, that love, which passes uh, the understanding. So that was the very first time when I got in contact. With, with the love of God, it, it, and it was so deep that I know I know that uh, there's nothing else which worth really living for, only the love of God, only the peace of God. So uh, I'm over here because uh, I owe you a lot, guys. I'm really grateful for all of you. I know you uh, <laughs> due to this uh, online word. I've been following uh, the teachings of uh, David for years. I also read all of the books of David. I love your book as well. Thank you very much for your blunt uh, honesty. That helped me a lot. <laughs> and I married a mystic book. So, yeah. Still recently, I, I felt some times that uh, somehow I stuck in my uh, spiritual journey and uh, when I'm asking the Holy Spirit uh, he always telling me the same joining mm -hmm. joining so I'm over here just to to share the love to share the doubts and just laugh them, laugh at them together <laughs> and uh, yeah I'm, I'm over here to be happy <laughs> thank you Hi, my name is whoa. <laughs> my name is Betsy, and uh, if you could hear my heart, it's like beating out of my chest right now. Um, a few that are um, maybe a couple in this room know um, why I'm here, but um, I will say that when I first heard about um, this spiritual retreat, I thought I, I had that spark, the desire to attend. And then I realized that my lease of where I live um, expires tomorrow. So I thought, well, okay, I can't go because <laughs> I will need to have a place to live. Um, and then somebody posted one of your videos, a little uh, snippet of no ifs, ands, or buts. And it really struck a chord with me because I thought about this retreat and I thought I would really like to go, but my lease is up. That's a pretty big deal. Um, but I felt, I just, I felt this strong drawing to step out in faith and fill out the application. So I did, and I sent it in, and, um, Mital reached out to me, and we scheduled an interview, and the day before... Um, our interview, my landlord reached out to me to let me know that he could not renew my lease, but he and his wife w would not be coming down to um, have their vacation until November. So if I wanted to stay until the end of October, I was welcome to do so. So this was a huge answer to prayer because it meant that I could come here and not be homeless. I would have some place to go back to. But in this whole process, which actually started, um, 
in, with the Mystical Christ Academy, um, when I signed up for that, I, I really took it to heart. And I um, fasted for the entire eight weeks. And because I wanted to hear, I mean, I wanted to hear from Jesus. I want to know what, what do you have for me? And um, it's like all the signs and symbols were pointing to here. And I had all of these synchronicities that were coming up that my lease was up at the end of September. My truck registration was up at the end of September. My car insurance was up at, in a couple of weeks. And I was just failing to let go of all of these things, my post office box. And um, so I did. I, I closed my post office box. I actually sold my truck the day before I came here. I canceled my insurance. And um, I'm, I'm here for the next step. I'm ready to be activated. And I'm feeling drawn to this community, but I'm absolutely terrified of what that will look like because there is that feeling of um, a sense of losing my freedom, losing my independence. But I feel that the door is closing on Florida. I feel the connection is no more. I've been asking myself the past couple of months, why am I even here? Why am I here? I don't feel inspired to be here so my intention for coming was because i felt guided and called to be here and my prayer is to be shown um with clarity what the next step is how exciting <laughs> <laughs> and now jesus is closing the country <laughs> There's a few things going on. This is going to make a good movie. <laughs> Hi, I'm Wendy. I hate talking into mics, but I'm going to give it a shot. So, the prayer of my heart, I'm going to back up. I have been feeling uh, less intellectually and actually more experientially the oneness. And hearing everybody sharing as, <laughs> as we go around, it just solidified it for me completely because there's really nothing for me to say that hasn't been said that isn't what this Wendy character is feeling. It's the same thing. So, um, yeah, that just sealed the deal for me. So thank you all, really. That was, that was awesome. So, yeah, the, I mean, the prayer of my heart is to, to dive into who I am and, and, and to stop thinking about it now and to stop intellectualizing. And you know, I've gathered enough information, you know, I'm one of those information gatherers or, or I was, and um, I'm done with the processing too. I've done that for, you know, 40 years. I've been on a, a 30, 30, 40 year spiritual journey and uh, cried a lot of tears did all that I'm not saying I'm done but but I'm, I'm but I but I think I'm done <laughs> I don't know I don't really know but I just the prayer of my heart is to really just turn inward and 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 just get really quiet and and now stop running away from the Christ within me, and and to really accept that, and to uh, and to just go within. 
So I think that's it. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's been a little intense the past few years. Um, I just moved to Florida a couple of years ago. And um, as soon as we got there, a couple of months later, that hurricane hit. So uh, lived through that Category 5 hurricane, which was really interesting. Um, really was, like, really, really such a great opportunity to go into that faith again and to, to just really be with that and, and practice it, you know, and, and not think about it anymore and read about it and make notes about it. And so, um, yeah, been listening to David on podcasts forever and, uh, walking in the woods, David's in my ear, going to the supermarket, David's in my ear, you know, so really has been uh, such a such a help to understanding the Course in Miracles and and uh, you know for that brief time when Kirsten was doing the meditations I, I really love joining with that and and joining you know that's that's another big reason why I wanted to come to to really just join in prayer with everybody and to just be the Christ and let go of the character. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. My, my name is Maria. And my, my biggest desire is to heal the mind, to have the, my mind healed and to get up every day and say, Holy Spirit, this is, I give you this day and I don't have a plan. And just live in the present moment. That's my desire. Like, I, I don't want anything else. But what has happened in the last year and a half is I, I retired in January 1st of 2022. And I say, Jesus, I'm full time now for you. And then what happened? I got sick for six months, super sick. I bounced back. And, um, and then somebody introduced me to this community. And I dive in with the community. <laughs> and then I went to Mexico. And after Mexico, it has been horrible. <laughs> I mean, the, the ego is just like unleash. It's been really bad. And uh, I'm just like asking Jesus, when is this going to stop? <laughs> and it's to the point like I, it, it, um, you know, it's got me physically sick. I'm, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't think sickness serves me for anything, you know, and sometimes I've been like, I'm just going to die. But that doesn't serve me either because, I mean, I'm here to wake up. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I lost a lot of weight. I'm basically in bones. I don't have a lot of, a lot of muscle in my body. Um, I'm on a high protein diet. So the ego was giving me all the resources in the world not to come here. But I, I wanted to come here, you know. I, I thought this is time to trust. And so, you know, I've been day by day, you know, like yes, I, I don't know if I'm going, but I'm just going, you know, asking the Holy Spirit to just guide me each day. And I didn't know even like yesterday, I, I said, I know I'm not going until I, the day and um, when I take to the airport, then I know I'm going. Before I didn't know if I was coming because, because I don't feel good physically. You know, this, all this unleashing of the ego, like um, I'm realizing how controlling I've been in my life how I judge my daughter. My daughter abuses alcohol, and sometimes it seems that she ramps, ramps up the drinking, and then it's more stuff coming, more stuff coming. How I, 
I have judged myself. How I got, you know, all these emotions because things don't go my way, because people don't live up uh, to my expectation. And it's just like, it's like a million tiny little things from, from cleaning, from education, from organization. You know, it's just like a, I made up this little world of the things should have to be this way. And you know, and that's, that's happening that like, I, I know that there's healing going because I'm seeing all that. I'm seeing it. And I'm really asking for the correction. I accept the atonement. <laughs> I'm asking Jesus for the correction every time. And, uh, and so I know that, I mean, I ha have the glimpses of the love of God. And even though, when, even when I don't have any, any little hinge in my heart or any, for a month or for two months, I know I, I don't give up. I will never give up because I know this is the truth. I mean, we, I am love, you know, and I, I, love is what supports me because, I mean, this body is not supporting me. Um, you know, it's the first time that I, I travel an airplane without fear. You know, no fear at all. Um, Andy was driving that road today, and my body felt like my organs were falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I mean, not because you were driving wrangless or anything, but it's just because the road. And I'm like, I mean, I'm in a lot of pain physically for the last three months, a lot of pain. And I really want that to stop, but, um, but you know, there is pain, there is no God. And if there is God, then there is no pain, you know? And I choose God, only God. And so I don't have, I don't have expectations for coming here. I'm just, I give it to the spirit. You, you take over, you take over and, and you know, I know this is, this is going to be a, a very loving, safe community group here and that's, that's, that makes me happy. So thank you, everyone. It's always easier when you're, when you're watching, you know, listening. Um, Tom Paul. Whew, boy, I guess the only way I'll get to the end is if I say something. It's like, David, you moved into my living room, you know, thank you for moving in with me. You know, you've been a very, been a very lovely housemate, you know, you don't, you don't F with stuff, you know what I mean? You're, you, you, you only talk when I want to listen to you, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, you don't have to feed me. Yeah. Oh, you are cheap. Yeah. You, you don't pay much of the rent, but I got pretty cheap rent, that's so it. that's good. Yeah, I'm on a liquid diet, but my dig <laughs> digital self is, yeah, it, it doesn't eat. <laughs> but it's really my experience. I mean, that's that's really my experience, you know, and I only, only discovered you. You know, I discovered the course. I was given the course, like, in the early 80s, mid-80s, and... You know, I've studied it and whatever, did the lessons, whatever. Somehow it became part of me. You know, like I say, the truly helpful prayer every day, that's kind of the prayer that I pray. <laughs> Can I talk? Multiple times a day. I just discovered the trust meditation. Oh my God. Just saying, just, just saying, I got a new tool, you know, I, a new tool and, and it's lovely, you know? And, you know, I don't, I hadn't really studied the course. I mean, I'm not read, wasn't reading it all the time. Next level soul. That's, that's, that's how I, and then I bumped, I bumped into another interview and like, Oh shit, this is, this is, you know, this is what's happening because this is experiential. You know, I mean, the reason I stopped going to course groups was because like nobody could even read the damn thing. You know what I mean? It's, a, it's so challenging to the, to the ego. I mean, people can't even like discuss the material. You know what I mean? Because 
because it's just too overwhelming. Like we got to talk about it like this is some, like you say, some new thought yippity yap. You know what I mean? And I'm all down with. I've been down with the new thought and Eastern. I've I've been all over the place. This is not my first rodeo or my last rodeo, probably. Whatever. <laughs> but you know, it's experiential. You know, and, and I if you want to tell you want to, I want to live at a whole new damn level. You know what I mean? I I really related to what was shared about you know being completely dedicated but not getting the payoff you know where's the juice you know where's the money honey you know what I mean and I see you I mean man you are one talking son of a gun dude <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I, I'm just saying I mean <laughs> The, the spirit picked you because you got a good set of pipes. You got a healthy set of pipes, bro. Just saying, you know. So, so, so we're riding up here together, and and you're talking about uh, you know how to fully say yes, getting out of your comfort zone. Oh man, I, I'm going like I'm laughing my ass off. You know what I mean? Because this is this is what I'm doing. Ask me why I'm here. I don't know what's going to happen here. I can tell you what's already happened here. Oh man. I have felt some beautiful people here. I feel so connected. I just had this little conversation sitting at the table with three other people. I feel closer to them like the 90% of the people in my life. And we just had a little conversation. You know what I mean? Crime any sakes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm just like, I'm going to, I don't know. I told Mitha, I think my ego is probably going to get its ass kicked. And she said, <laughs> and she said, and she said, in a very gentle way. <laughs> and watching you do business, you know, with people online, you know, I mean, I feel the sincerity. And, you know, I like to cry. I need to cry. I need to let go. I've been crying on and off in this little session here tonight and it's just good because it's all letting go of all those blocks to love that's why we're here we're here to let go of our blocks to love you know and i'm all down with that program and i don't know what it's going to take because i'm not the spirit you know i'm not jesus you know what i mean i don't know you know what i mean <laughs> how the hell would i know that's why i'm here so thank you and thank you for moving in with me and thank you for the meditation <laughs> And uh, that's it. <laughs> uh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I can feel it. I you said it was a sweet group, but we're we're in for a ride. We're we're going to take a ride here for the next 12 days. There's one point where Jesus says uh, that the, the course is, is not difficult, but it is very different. Yeah. That, that line says a lot. It's not difficult, but it is very different. And I think we can kind of cue off of that line to just pray and open up, okay, if it's very, if this journey from now on is going to be very, very, very different, I'll embrace that and also be reassured it's not going to be difficult. It's just going to be different. Different from the past, different from my expectations, different than the timeline. It, it's going to be so different, it's going to collapse time. It's going to bring the Alpha and the Omega together into the and we're going into the I am into the I amness and nothing of our five senses has really prepared us for I amness for before Abraham was I am you know it's everything all of our learning all of our beliefs you know, like Phil was saying you put them all up there and and say okay now I've got to question them all because none of our beliefs really prepared us for I am as God created me. So, also Jesus did a, a, a pamphlet. We talk a lot about prayer, and prayer is the medium of miracles. Prayer is going to be the, the, our, our means to awakening. You know, prayer, some of you have heard of Mary Baker Eddy, you know, basically her whole Christian science philosophy could, 
could be boiled down to two words, pray first. Pray first. Prayer is going to be the key. And then in the Song of Prayer, Jesus says, when I started reading the sentence, it, it really got my attention the way he starts the sentence out. The secret of true prayer is how he starts the sentence off. The secret of true prayer is to forget the things you think you need. Wow, now we're on a journey of faith. We're on a journey of trust. To forget the secret of true prayer, put those words together, true prayer is to forget the things you think you need. And just the witness of everyone, what everyone's been sharing. I mean, Wendy moves to Florida, of all the cities she could move to, she goes two months before Category 5, and where did the eye hit? Her town. It, that is strong. That's a strong symbol. When a cat, it's like having Katrina <laughs> coming right at you. Category 5, two months there, and you know that's just, if everything in the dream is just a symbol, that's a, a symbol for your way will be different. And, and it was a call. And, and with Betsy, you know, all those synchronicities of just everything coming to an end at once. And, and then Paul saying, and then as a federal employee, you know, yeah, tomorrow the government runs out of money. So it's the end of leases, it's the end of <laughs> the federal government shuts down. It's, it's almost like that, that Kevin Costner movie, A Perfect Storm. There's a perfect storm brewing in order to go for the way that's different. And, and really admit, it doesn't have to be difficult, but it just will be so different than anything I've ever experienced. Once you start to take that in, you're so ready for it. In fact, that's like coming as a little child. That's just coming with openness and willingness to say, guide me, direct me lead my every step, you know, unwind me from every scrap of ego belief so that I can be in this pristine state of I amness that, that is the most natural thing. So I could hear it was like a chorus as we went through with everyone just saying sometimes it's even the extreme experiences are helpful as a contrast and as Maria was saying, I know I am love underneath it, no matter what goes on with the body, no matter what the pain that comes up or whatever, you know, I'm not giving up because there's something inside of me that knows this is it my, and my way will be different. And th that to me, I think, is, the, is kind of a rapid way of undoing expectations because that's really where the suffering is. It's the suffering is our expectations of how things should be. That's, that's the ego's plan of salvation. If something in the world of form was different, I would be happy. And then the Holy Spirit's plan is if I would change my mind, change my perspective right now, I would be happy. Those are diametrically opposed. I've said that the whole Course in Miracles is really just a serenity prayer it's an expanded version of the serenity prayer. What you can change, your mind. What you cannot change, the world, and the wisdom to know the difference is the Holy Spirit. And when you start to go through the intensities, you can just start to see, wow, this, there's, an, a, there's a very strong addiction to a body identity. That's really what comes, you know, all the other addictions are like, mm -hmm, no, 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 it's, a, it's the addiction to a body identity. Even what seems to be death, which is seemed to be something that everyone fights against, you know, tries to survive and fight against it. But I posted a quote today on my Facebook profile on some pages that, where Jesus was using two words together that, that really are not very common, even in the Course, and he, used, he says it in the Song of Prayer, but he uses the word death, and he uses the word reward. 
that's a very rare use of those two words together. A reward for function fulfilled, job well done. Wow, that's a different reinterpretation of what the world would call death. Instead of fighting against dying, he's actually saying that in the end we're here to let go of judgment, we're here to let go of the false meaning that we've read onto everything, all the images of the world, and in the end it's kind of like we're here for that Truman Show moment, in case they don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. You know, it's, it's kind of like taking a bow, like all that processing, all that work, all that efforting, all that hanging in there, you know, ultimately comes with a final surrender, a final let go, a final release. And it's like everything we do is gearing up for that release, to finally say to the ego, I release you. You no longer serve me. I see you for who you are, or for what you are, a belief that doesn't serve me anymore. And then that's how we are free of it, not by trying to kill it, fight it, battle it, but just to see its nothingness and have a good laugh at it. That's my hope for us in these 12 days that we'll have we will laugh a lot, <laughs> because when we laugh a lot, we, we are really feeling the strength of the Spirit, that, that nothing can hold us back. So everyone knows who studies the Course, that the, the, the Course, Jesus is saying, here's the main thing, forgiveness. It's the one requirement is accept the Atonement, is to forgive. So. Before we go to sleep tonight, we know, okay, we'll, we'll take that one into our hearts. Okay, forgive, forgive, forgive. In Lesson 135, he tells us three things not to do. He's told us what to do, forgive, and then he's going to give us three things to sleep on tonight that he doesn't want us to do. Three things. Don't activate the past organize the present, or plan the future. Just three things. <laughs> That's our trinity right there. Because once we take that in, we go, whoa, whoa, like Neo on the building, whoa, after Morpheus jumps across, whoa. Well, you can see where you will have to trust, you will have to have the faith. If you're, if you're not going to activate the past, organize the present or plan the future, the first thing is, is this even human? <laughs> it's like, is that even human? But it, it is a call to faith. It is a call to deep prayer. You know, like Muna was saying, this is it. This is last ditch effort. You know, I, I, I have got to open up to the love. I have to fully believe. <laughs> no matter, forget the past, okay, it's history. <laughs> I have to fully believe. I have to do this. And, and that's what's beautiful. That's also what's beautiful about the way we have our community living, is it's based on faith, it's based on trust. The things that, that you were saying about letting go of leases and, and selling your car and everything, yeah, those are, are steps that, that we have had to pass and, and, and go through. And, and you're doing it kind of rapidly. <laughs> <laughs> I remember most of it the first time, it was one of those years we were traveling, we were up and going through Sheboygan and going over to Bob and Kathy's and yeah, that was the parable where we, I, we were there for a number of days and Kirsten put out the donation basket and day one, nothing in it, day two, nothing in it. Day three, nothing, and then... And my eyes were watching that basket. <laughs> <laughs> because she's living on donations now, and she's watching that basket like... At least I'm like, talking the talk of living on donations now. <laughs> Not quite walking the walk, which is why my eyes were watching the basket. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that was good, because it, after it started, the upset emotions started to come and come and come, like... Yeah, this is a big leap of faith on divine providence, and yeah, not a single 
penny in this thing. What are these people thinking? You know, da 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 da. da. Then it it did come down to when you prayed to Jesus. Jesus gave you that question: Where are you withholding? Mm -hmm. That was what Jesus came back mm -hmm. to start to begin the the unraveling. That was beautiful. But that's how it goes for all of us. Mm -hmm. Jesus says in in any situation, the only thing that is lacking is what you have failed to give. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful idea. You could just simmer in that one. In any situation, the only thing that's lacking is what I have failed to give. Wow, the giving part seems to be really important. And and that's becoming honest in our with our emotions, with our what's going on in our mind. Mm -hmm. That's the key. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was miraculous. Because then it was just in prayer. It was like, oh, oh my God, I have a bank account that I was kind of keeping secret from Jesus. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, I give that to you. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, oh yeah, I have a house as well that I, it's my plan B, you know, that I haven't really. It, it's a plan B in case God's plan doesn't work out. So I just spent the whole night going through all of these things and I got down to my skis that I didn't want to let go of in case I wanted to go skiing again sometime. And just went through in my mind and prayer, giving, Green, giving, Subaru, giving, a car, <laughs> a car, a house, a bank account, a country, a, you know, and and realizing that it was all what it was doing in my mind, you know, it, it, it was it was a withholding and it and I wasn't even conscious about it. So it's not as if I was consciously Yeah, doing something, but in the projection onto others, why are they not generous? Why are they not giving all? Why are they not supporting divine providence? I was like, Oh, this is why I don't know what it means yet. You know, I need to give so I spent the whole night giving, giving, giving to Jesus. Here, I just give you this. I give you it all. Anything else? Is there anything else that I haven't given to you? And the next morning, I just felt so humble and surrendered. You know, I just surrendered and just, wow, I don't know anything. I really don't know anything. Like a little child again. And then came out and we had the next gathering. And at the end of the gathering... It was, someone said, oh, well, you live on donations to David. Yeah, you, well, it's okay for you. You can travel around and do gatherings and receive money and receive donations. And David said, oh, like all of these donations? And he held up the empty basket <laughs> and put it down. And the guy was like, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, we're the one, who, you know, it's like this whole thing about giving, giving. That's right. Who is the giving? Who, who who are we giving to? What are we giving for? It was just this beautiful prayer of everyone realizing we have to give to what we value. And to give to Jesus is giving to what I value. It's not about the things. It's not about lack. It's not about loss. It's about giving over to the one that we trust and then feeling so freed up to really fully support what we value. And then at the end of that gathering, people just came up and the basket was filled to overflowing. <laughs> it was just a beautiful cherry on top. Yeah, to see the shift in my mind and to trust. Yeah. It's interesting, there's those 10 characteristics of a teacher of God and the number seven is generosity. But, but Jesus says, actually the term is the opposite of what the world believes about generosity. So you can think, what comes to mind first with generosity? And Jesus says, okay, now it's the exact opposite of that. So you can see his curriculum is so different. It requires such a surrender and a release of every preconceived idea. Because when we think of generosity, and we think of whatever contributions we may we may think of philanthropist and you know the Carnegies and Ted Turner's the the great philanthropies throughout history and he's saying okay 
the exact opposite of that, then we're going in the right direction. And he says in that section, the teacher of God does not want anything that he cannot give away. What would he want it for, he could only lose because of it. Ah, oh, well that's really going in the other direction. That's flipping it from the idea of past learning, putting your faith in past learning, putting your faith in education, in, in all of the, the means of the world, which tell you you need the means to accomplish your end in the future. And he's saying, more like Abraham Maslow, no, the means and the ends are together. The miracle in this moment is the means. And this moment is the end too. It's all contained in one moment. That's so different from our conditioning. You know, all of our education was means and ends are separate. Means come first, ends come later. Sometimes much later. <laughs> we wait decades. <laughs> so I'm going to hang with it, hang with it. But he's saying, no, it's, it's in this instant. So that's what I mean by it's not, it's not difficult, but it is different because it's so different from anything that we've ever even considered. It, it's, it's something that's right there, it's closer than the end of our nose, but it's, it's out of awareness because we've had too much learning, too much programming, conditioning to, to snuff it out, to cover it from awareness. And I, I can relate when Betsy's saying, you know, okay, the, you just did Mystical Christ Academy, then you went fasting for those weeks, and then things just started to happen, like signpost, and then another one, and another one, and another one. That's how it works. That's how we go on the different way that's different from anything we've ever done before. It's like we we become God-dependent. I mean, dependency is not a, a good, it has really negative connotations. Uh, into our societies and our, you know, who who wants to be dependent? Who who would say, I can't wait to be dependent? You know, it's usually a lifeline, a whole life trying to be not be dependent. But Jesus is saying, no, be God dependent. Depend depend on God for everything. The secret of true prayer is to forget the things you think you need. That seems to be a big leap of faith, because what it's saying is everything will then come to you in, in recognizable symbols that will just take you one step at a time, building your faith, building your confidence, building your certainty, making you feel invulnerable, untouchable, and in the strength that is way beyond any conception of this world, but through an experience of, okay, I give you my faith, and then the, the steps come. So that's what a lot of our parables have been in our community, have, have been all those steps where it seemed as if things were being taken away, even in droves like with you, it's like, wow, not just one. <laughs> starts off with just the lease, <laughs> and it's like, oh, and, eh, eh. and then out of all that comes a blessing where whatever is to happen or whatever is most helpful just shows up because we've stopped worrying about those things and just said, okay, done, 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 okay, now what's next? And, and even Helen Schuckman, when she was doing a describing of the Course, you know, she did ask Jesus about prayer, that's how we got the Song of Prayer, but he, he basically said, when you pray and you ask for help, it will be most effective if you, if you with, don't put parameters and limits on the prayer, to the extent that you cannot put limits on the prayer, I can reach you and help you in a much faster way. So when we pray with limits, and we pray, I want this and this, when we pray for specifics, most of us have been used to that, they call it manifesting now, but praying for specifics. When we pray for specifics, he basically is saying, you're just asking 
for the past to be repeated in some way that you believe is best when you pray for specifics. And then, if you take the parameters off the prayer, it could just be help. <laughs> Maybe that's a, that's a good prayer. Because that's the prayer of the heart, where you're so open to be shown then what is most helpful. So the more parameters you put on, he'll still answer those questions, he'll still answer those prayers, but he's saying it's more helpful, I can, we can move much faster if you take the limits and the, the off of the prayer. So, wow, what a, what a start. Yeah. And some of you have traveled a long way, <laughs> so it's, it's time to, <laughs> to get a good night's sleep. <laughs> yeah, we want to honor that too, I know. It's, it's a journey just to come here. Yeah. Beautiful.